Brax Cast Time once again. This is the tenth episode, and we're going to be focusing a little bit more on the Yaira campaign. So we've got some number stuff to get into. So the print numbers have been revealed for the Yaira number one campaign, but I'm going to highlight some fan art first. This is Alejandro Vasquez and Mariano de Venezia who uh, colored this. Uh, Alejandro did the art for this, and this is basically like a magazine cover for a projectus. This is very much like an in-universe thing. This is something that if there was a Yaira video game, you would probably like see this or a Yaira movie or whatever have you, or hell, in a, in a comic book, you would see this in the background of a panel. It just makes it, makes it feel more real, more lived in. Like, you know, you're in a, a, um, a doctor's office in Forest Park and you would see this around the time. And this is like this is something that you think like, oh, yeah, that would be there. And so like People or Life magazine, uh, you would see stuff like this because, you know, Projectus is this big company, January 13th, number one. Uh, it's That's like the issue number again. This makes us feel like it's a, a lived in uh, universe when you have stuff like this. And uh, of course, it's just a great piece of art. She's got the piercing blue eyes there with this light glow. Uh, you've got, you know, the very formal look of um, Dr. Sally Rodell, like, you know, the business, uh, you know, suit sort of thing. Uh, that's that's uh, going on in uh, Isom number two in her scene, although what she's wearing is a little bit uh, darker than that. She's got the ponytail. But again, I think this looks fantastic. This looks like something that could be uh, alongside uh, any sort of co other piece of comic book art. Um, in terms of the uh, quality that's drawn, like I said, it's just something that is like it's great to see like stuff like this because it makes um, makes it feel like you're you have a lived in universe rather than just a story that's being told when you've got like magazine covers and like the names of what the coffee shops and electronic stores are and they're not just like you know knocks off knock off of like Best Buy or Starbucks or stuff like that. Like it's stuff that um, makes it feel like oh this isn't um, quite like. Uh, not necessarily it's, it could be like earth it's just like a, an alternative alternative version of it it's like this is unique this is um something that draws you and this is something that makes you feel like okay there's a whole like world like you know someone could live in there live in this world and have a day-to-day -day, uh life where they never encounter a gyro or an isom or a brian solari uh because you've got you know stuff like this uh but <laughs> again uh me talking about this uh piece of fan art way longer than i needed to but like I said, I do love the Ripperverse for its in-universe aspects of this. But this is a fantastic piece of art. Leandro TFX um, drew this. Uh, Peach has colored this. And this is a fantastic piece of artwork. Just love the perspective here. Again, you've got the building jutting out at the diagonal uh, level to make it really um, coming up from the ground. So you're looking at this up from the ground, which gives Yaira this very domineering, this very powerful um tone that she appears she's taking now i think this is magus new uh I'll, I'll stake my uh, i'll stake my reputation as a guy who knows a lot about the ripperverse on uh this uh i do think this is magus new but anyway she's got you know the power going on she's got ice all around her clearly just in uh combat uh she's got a little rip here on her i guess i guess this is her stocking uh you, you would call it stocking slash shoe this indicate that she's you know, even though she looks, you know, calm and cool under control, she was just in a fight. But again, this is just beautifully drawn. The proportions on her look fantastic. The line work looks great. I love these, you know, bold, dark lines outlining the figure. Gives it that comic book look. Also, um, it's not so overdone that it looks like too cell shaded. It has this nice, uh, realistic enough look. Of course, this hair is done really well. Um, but again, it's just a, a really good representation of the human figure, a very idealistic version of um, what uh, a woman can look like. Of course, Yara is like a six foot one, 215 pound um, alien ice um, you know, person. So she's not going to look um, at all um, average or underwhelming. She's very much at like the peak of physical performance in this piece of comic book art really represents or like again it could be comic book art but this is and this is a uh, fan art uh, work and I'm not sure if this was uh, for a submission um, for the uh, the fan art contest it was America only so you had to be from the states in order to make a submission um, for this but again this is just a great piece of art I wanted to highlight it I did uh, a couple bracks cast ago I highlighted a bunch of art um, that I thought was cool 
uh, you can go to uh, theRiververse.com, check out the fan art uh, pages, and you can see um, Isom 1, 2, and uh, Yai were number one of all the head fan art contests. Great submissions. Uh, Diller did one for Isom 2, I believe, a drawing of Isom that is really, really cool as well. Um, so there's a lot of talented people who are making uh, fan art uh, for the contest, outside of the contest as well. And this is, I definitely, I think, probably one of the best pieces I've seen because, like I said, it's just a great use of perspective. Uh, the coloring is great, of course. That's uh, Peach has and um, who <laughs> did all the coloring. You know, you got the great, the the value um, of this. Great, there's a great understanding of um, artist of these artistic techniques. Like I said, perspective and understanding the figure and having stuff look realistic. Like you've got these little rep um, around her. Uh, I guess the her uh, waist piece here, which I, I say is one of the most uh, interesting parts of her costume, just the way the belt is drawn and designed. It just makes it feel, uh, it's a blending of uh, elements that make this look realistic while also being stylized. I think especially her hair you know, looks fantastic as well. It's just all these little details. I can look and get lost in this uh, picture because it's just so well drawn. So I think if you're going to reach out to anybody and have them do like any work, get these guys to uh, do a book because I would love to help read a whole book with art like this. It's fan flipping tastic. Uh, so that's the Yaira uh, fan art that I wanted to highlight today. But Yaira Winter is still uh, chilling down. You know, we don't say heating up because this is Yaira Winter. Uh, so the campaign, I'd say we're, we're getting into that final stretch. And as such, uh, the print numbers have been revealed as what's going to happen in April. And it's still uh, April at the tail end of this month. So we've got 9,000 cover A's will be printed. That's all we're getting. Uh, 6,000 cover B's, 4,000 cover C's. And of course, cover D is the mass print cover that's going to be as many printed um, to keep up with the demand for Yara One, not only during the campaign, but when this book hits the uh, Ripaverse uh, store, that evergreen storefront that's going to be operating all the time, even though uh, Eric has confirmed that they're moving away from the campaign format, I, I still think they shouldn't completely abandon it. Like I, um, I said, Isom Free should definitely be a campaign, but uh, you know, stuff like Isom Free definitely needs to be a campaign. I would think Blood Roof Run needs to be a campaign, but Gooding and Horsemen definitely do not need to be. Uh, there's lots of like, if Salvage, let's say, were to get his own book um, outside of the Repazine, which uh, speaking of the Repazine, really quickly. 2,000 collector's editions are being printed and the base version is going to be unlimited. So they'll keep that in print until the second issue comes out and then they'll put that out of print. So, But there's going to be enough uh, base versions of the Ripazine for anybody to get into it. And of course, the collector's edition is going to be for the people who uh, just really are into the Ripaverse, like myself, who just want to have that cool collector's edition that features. You can barely see it here, but it's a drawing of Salvage done by Canon White. Both covers are done by... Uh, canon white but the collector's edition has just that big um bold picture or bold drawing of uh salvage with a, like a bond um esque uh action sort of um you know pose i would say like dropping in with the gun in his hand it's a very cool noir uh looking cover and it's a great collector's uh cover so uh only 2000 of those are ever being printed so uh we don't know how many repazines have been sold um, we're not trans, we don't have, um, that number listed on the, uh, campaign storefront, which I think should have been, um, for the campaign storefront or the, um, at least at some point, uh, the, uh, Ripaverse should uh, reveal uh, probably at the end of the campaign, how many Ripazines have been sold. Uh, that's a number I'm really interested in seeing, like how many, um, people got in on the first issue, how many out of the 2000 of the collector's edition sold is a very interesting thing, but we do know how many cover A, B, uh, and C's sold. So I wrote this down here. I'm going to read this out. 78% uh, so far of the cover A's sold that are available. So that's 7,017. And again, I got these numbers in Saturday morning. It could be a little bit uh, inaccurate, but the percentage sold through should still be accurate for um, a good, good bit because we're not like day one where it goes up like you know multiple percentage points. Uh, it's slowed down a little bit, but so massively successful. So 78% of the 9,000 cover A's have sold. That's just over 7,000. I think 17,000 books have been sold um, in total, uh, which is a ridiculous amount of books to sell for an independent company. So it's a very uh, successful campaign. 
And it's really going to be um, fantastic to see what they do in the future um, with this sort of profit that they keep experiencing. But cover B, uh, which is, uh, oh yeah, this classic cover uh, right here. I forget who uh, did it. Um, but 3,000, 3,578 uh, copies sold. That's 60% of uh, the cover Bs um, that are being printed have sold. And 68% of the cover Cs that Scram Nolan's cover, 2,725 of 45, oh, not 45, 4,000 will all be printed. That's the foil and embossed. It's a limited edition. Graham Nolan's a very, uh, you know, legendary comic book artist. He had his uh, stint in mainstream comics, but I know he does Compass Comics as well. Um, that's his, uh, that's how his uh, independent imprint. I know him more through the projects he's done there. I'm not really this big um, comic book guy who knows the whole lore of um, Marvel and DC and all the talent that worked uh, behind it. I'm very much like new into the scene of comics, so. Forgive me for that, but this is, I think, a really good um, number to hit, and I do think um, they probably had all these proofed and ready to go beforehand, and then they finalized it based on the way the campaign um, went um, for the month of March, which I think is a fantastic way to do it, or that's just me speculating. They could have had these numbers beforehand and just lined up, but this is fantastic. Everyone who wanted um, to get in on these and really, really wanted either A, B, or C, I'll be able to do so. Uh, I do think these covers are going to be uh, on the storefront after afterwards. They'll only have, um, you know, until those get um, all sold through. And I do think uh, cover A is probably going to sell out, sell out relatively quickly if they do that, uh, especially maybe cover C. Uh, it is a bit more expensive, but it's definitely got that more of a, a collector's um, uh, appeal to it since it is foiled and embossed and it's got um graham nolan's um art attached to it that's the first you know cover he did for uh the rip of so it's not like a canon white's cover a where you know he's done a bunch of covers for uh rip of books and he's going to continue to do so so i don't think that's going to be as collectible as something like a cover c is going to be um or the yeah, iris cover c considering one foiled embossed uh and the fact that it's his first cover for the rip of so i i do think that ups the collector's um, aspect of it, although that's just me uh, personally. But with Yara number one, uh, I do wait. I don't think I didn't print this out, but Eric made a tweet saying they've got more stuff to reveal for the Yara number one campaign, and that's exciting. So I think May is when we're heading into fulfillment of the Yara number one campaign. End of May, it's like 26, I, I believe, of May. So I think they're going to have a good uh, final marketing push. And now, what are they going to reveal? Uh, the next two stretch goals that uh, we have uh, yet to hit, and I, I think um, are the most realistic for this campaign to hit, will be one and a half million, uh, or their benchmark stretch goals, whatever you want to want to call them. But one and a half million is uh, a future live action promise. Uh, now, regardless of whether or not we get to that one point five million, I think one of the things could be like, well, this is what we have in plans for uh, future live action, this is what we want to do. And uh, whether we can do that is going to be, you know, dependent on uh, how much funding we get. We're at $1.368 million, 10,138 purchasers. Um, as of recording this, probably a little bit over, um, but those are the numbers. I got them Saturday morning. I'm recording this Saturday afternoon. Uh, so it could be different if you have the site open in another tab and you're looking at the numbers, like why don't they line up well? You're watching this after I got uh, those numbers, but I think it's very realistic. We hit one and a half million, uh, and then they have the reveal of what the future live action will be. And also, I think regardless if we hit two million, the stretch, sorry, benchmark for the um, two million dollar mark is the Yaira statue. So I think regardless of if we hit that two million dollar mark for the Yaira campaign, we'll get to see what that Yaira statue looks like. And maybe we even get a, commi a committal to a limited run. Like, you know, it could be 100 to 1,500, maybe 1,000 to 2,000. It depends on what they consider limited, the manufacturer they're, they're working with. There's a whole bunch of stuff when it comes to making physical goods where, um, you know, you, you could get um, more of a discount between, depending on 
the volume sort of buy and the minimum where you get the discount that makes sense. It could be like 500, it could be like, you know, 1500. I, I don't know really exactly know, but I do think that one of the bigger things could be a Yaira statue reveal, regardless of if we hit that 2 million or not. And again, uh, especially if we hit that one and a half million, uh, $1.5 million uh, of revenue, we get the, uh, that promise of live action. We get that reveal of what that is. Of course, we could get more um, interior artwork reveal for Gooding or Horseman. Those are the next two books that are uh, in the horizon. And I could definitely think that would be a big source of hype. Um, Blood Roof as well. Uh, that's, they're, they're talking about getting this out this year. Hopefully that's a Halloween release. That would be perfect considering she's got all of that uh, horror vibes attached to it. She's definitely got um, very much um, the makings of a great horror character. Also add to the fact that the Sasuke sisters are uh, horror movie directors. That's where they cut their teeth in terms of working creatively. Uh, from my knowledge, they have this, you know, extensive um, horror movie um, background. So they've got, uh, you know, they know the, the bread and butter of horror. So they're a perfect fit for writing Blood Roof, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, so I think more information about Bloodroof, considering the fact that they're also um, writing Yaira number one and Bloodroof. So I, I think it would fit uh, thematically. Uh, uh, my cat is here, so sorry about that. <laughs> you just sort of, you didn't see him in frame, but he sort of popped up next to me. That surprised me. But show must go on. So there is a lot of stuff to speculate on, uh, not just what will happen in the Yaira campaign, uh, but will happen um, after it. We know that we're getting Gooding and Horseman, so Gooding is going to be up next, and then Horseman. Uh, and then I would probably say uh, either Bloodroof or Ice I'm Free. Um, what you know would be really nice would have the Bloodroof 1 launch in uh, Halloween, and then we get Ice number 3 as that holiday book that closes off the... Uh, that closes off the uh, year... Uh, in the holiday season, that's when um, Alpha Core launched in the autumn and it ran all the way into the end of January. So that was the holiday book. I think Ice and Free would be fantastic for that, considering it's got, you know, that's this huge staying power, uh, considering the fact that it made 3.7 million in its first issue, then 2.3 in its second issue. Uh, there's a lot of hype and excitement around Isom as a character. Uh, people like him. He's got that selling power. So to combine that with that holiday rush where people have money, people are looking to spend money would be a fantastic thing. Uh, but I could speculate all day on this. Uh, I, I think the last thing that could get revealed, we could get some animation from Reverse Studios related to Yara, maybe like a short 30 second trailer uh, um, going over some stuff in Yara. Number one could be uh, something that gets revealed. That would be a fantastic thing as well. But that's just me uh, speculating. But I'm going to sign off now. Uh, I have left the door open to this, the room to this door open. So all the animals want my attention. But that's okay. This has been Braxcast. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. We're going into the outro now. Thank you for tuning in to the Braxcast. Be sure to like, comment, follow, and subscribe to keep up with the Ripiverse.